introduce you guys. Sure. At six o'clock. This one's live. Okay, all right. Thank you very much for attending our, I guess not our first, but our community event to showcase the work we've been doing on our building projects. Um, I'll let these ladies and gentlemen introduce themselves, but the purpose tonight is to inform you where we've come from April 5th of last year when the referendum passed, what steps we have, and provide an opportunity for you to ask questions on a big building project basis. And then in the commons area, we have individual buildings broken down that if you have an interest in a particular building, you'll be able to go to that particular board and representatives here will be able to help you there. That's the plan? Oh, yeah, you're going to John Erickson, DSGW Architects. Angela Schwartzwelder, DSGW Architects. <laughs> Chris Gregor, DSGW Architects. Mike Phillips, Cross Anderson. And Dustin Phillips, Cross Anderson. All right, so we're going to dive right into the slideshow here. Again, the purpose of tonight is just to share with you guys the work that we've done over the last couple of years. And uh, now to the uh, schematic design drawings. Oh, sorry. Okay. Thank you. So where have we been? So over the last almost two years now, hard to believe, a lot of work has been completed and we're really excited to showcase that for you tonight. Um, so starting back all the way again, about a year and a half, two years ago, we went through and completed a detailed facility assessment of every building within the district. So all the nuts and bolts from a deferred maintenance standpoint, carpet, doors, ceilings, and so on, right? Uh, from there then we created the Hayward Achievement Committee where we uh, compiled a group of uh, stakeholders across the buildings and uh, formed the priorities, if you will, for each building. Um, at that point then, we engaged with a task force of both community members as well as again within stakeholders of each building where we developed options for consideration for the school board to consider and those options were then approved. At that point then, we created, excuse me, a community survey in October of 21 where we sent out a survey to the community members and said, hey, Based on information that we've gathered from key stakeholders, both within the community and each school building, this is what we're looking at from a project basis at each building. Do you guys agree with the train of thought and the path that we're on, yes or no, and we took feedback from that. So high level, you remember there was three questions to that. Question one, and the only question that was ultimately asked was the $49.7 million updates to each of the four buildings. There was also kind of a community education center and pool with that, as well as turf fields both of which are not part of the project uh, that was passed. Um, at that point then, uh, the board recommended that we move forward with a ref referendum. The referendum question was approved back in January of 22, and by a, uh, I would say, near record turnout and a two to one margin, the referendum passed back on April 5th. So that's a quick summary of two years. I'm gonna turn it over to Dustin to talk about kind of where we're at now and upcoming schedule. Yeah, we'll hit high level on this so we can get into the fun stuff of what we've got for pictures from the design team tonight. But up here on the screen, I see a lot of familiar faces in the room, so a lot of you have already seen this. But these are kind of the major milestones across a project from the time a project is start, started or thought about all the way through its closeout and end of construction. So you see the two check marks over the last two years, as Mike pointed out, that's where we've been, planning and project development, that pre-referendum piece, developing those questions and the ultimate ask to get approved by the community. Where we're at right now is in step three in pre-construction. And while it took two years to get the check boxes, and you can see there's a lot involved in the first two, we're gonna be moving relatively quick when we go from pre-construction, which is where we're at right now, into bid and award, and ultimately start of construction. So with that, we can dive into the next for a high level schedule. What you see up on the screen, the yellow uh, marker that you see uh, right there right now is where we're, where we're ending schematic design. So we're going to be going in front of the board um, in the first board meeting in September, September 6th, for approval on the schematic design and ultimately the budgets that relate to that schematic design and tie back to the piece of the 49.7 that we've had as part of the referendum. Down at the bottom, I'm just going to highlight this quick, you'll see the four schools, the high school, the primary, the intermediate, and the middle. We're bringing all four of those projects um, to schematic design right now, and then you'll see that the intermediate and middle school stop until spring of next year, roughly February, March timeline of next year. The reason for that is there's so much work at the high school and at the primary school that the focus is gonna go from all four schools down to those two so that we can bid those out in January of 23 
so that you can start procuring materials. I'm sure if you went out to buy a refrigerator or bought furniture or any of those sorts of things, you're noticing that it takes two, three, four months, even longer sometimes to get those. That's why we're shooting to bid this, these two projects out in January so that we can start those next summer. And what you can see in green on the right hand side is the construction timeline for each of those schools. Both at the high school and the primary, they go longer because we have new additions that start to get built in the fall, carry you through the winter. And at the high school, we have a second round of summer renovations, which is why you see that extending out. But we'll be bringing the intermediate and middle school back online uh, to start uh, finishing up design development and construction documents in February and March. And ultimately those are summer projects of 2024. So that's a high level schedule for the remaining three items that we've got um, as far as milestones for a construction project. And if there's any questions, uh, we can field them as well. And I'm um, just gonna cover a couple of things, other pieces on here. Um, so in prep, uh, we, we have done a lot of building tours. We've toured other facilities with the, uh, some of the key stakeholder representatives to kind of get an idea of what the possibilities could be. Uh, visit other places that have gone through similar remodelings. Um, Hudson was one of the ma uh, major ones that went through a, a, a large project and are really did a lot of the similar things that we're looking at here as well. On the bottom, you can kind of see these little uh, uh, happy, pe uh, happy people icons here. That represents the meetings that we've had with user groups. So we've actually gone through three sessions now with our, our user group meetings. We are planning to come back uh, sometime in towards the end of September after school kind of gets settled in. And then we meet with these user groups again for each building and then we start getting into more detail about the, the spaces that will be remodeled, what types of things do they need, that type of thing. Um, and then again, through construction drawing phase. So really, we're looking at two to three more uh, opportunities to, to uh, meet with folks. And then, um, as Dustin indicated, intermediate school and middle school will pick that back up after the first of the year. So today we want to kind of walk you through uh, really an overview of the project. I um, invite you to stick around, you know, go into the uh, common space. We'll be at the, uh, we have the same boards printed out so they're going to be a little bit easier to read and get up close and ask specific questions to any of us and we'll do our best to answer you. So the high school obviously being the largest scope uh, of the projects, um, what you see here is kind of a color keying of, of areas that are um, either additions, they're heavily remodeled, or they're possibly like room reassignment. There's been a lot of that's been going around, uh, going through the conversations about how to best utilize existing space. Um, and that, that's been huge, hugely helpful for us to get the insights of those that are using the building um, to really make that uh, work out uh, most efficiently. So come to some of the key pieces are Right down here is, here's your main entrance to get you oriented. This is the auditorium. This is the band and choir uh, uh, suite. So this infill gets infill with the administrative offices. That vacates the high school admin space that's right here, which starts to open up some opportunity to create some uh, uh, opportunities there for um, collaborative learning spaces, et cetera, and we'll get into some larger drawings to help illustrate that. The other large piece of the component to this puzzle is the media center. There's a rework of that to really create a kind of a collaborative media common space. Um, back on this side, everybody's aware of the gymnasium addition, so two stations added onto the back. You'll see another drawing where the second floor indicates the fitness. Uh, spaces that would be up in the uh, current existing second gym. And then uh, the other large uh, rework space is the CT space, and uh, we'll get into a little more detail on that one. Some of these others are uh, areas that we're gonna be doing some, some reworking of the, the room assignment or finish upgrades. Uh, what's not represented on here is a whole other list of to-do items that's called deferred maintenance. Those are everything from the flooring redo, the ceilings, the lighting, uh, bleacher systems, that type of thing. And we kept that off of this level of drawing because we wanted to focus on the functionality changes to the building. That's what, that's so you can kind of get a better understanding of that. And then on the, on the side are some photos, in, inspiration photos of similar type spaces that we've either found off on the internet or 
on some of our tours. You know, for instance, this right here is a culinary lab at uh, Hudson that the group is really excited about seeing that space and the potential for doing something similar in this facility. So, gymnasium, busy. You want to take it from sure. here? Yeah. Okay. So we'll start off with the gym. Um, the we'll start off on the the upper gym or the uh, the upper portion of the plan here. The, the two station gym with a curtain in between. Um, we'll have public access here with an elevator and a stair. You'll check in here at this desk. Have access to the gyms and then um, bring that upstairs. You'll come up right here. There'll be a track going around the new gym. A row of uh, cardio machines overlooking that gym. On the back side of the track, we've got um, a bit a large space here at the current upper gym. Um, that's still a little bit in flux, but currently we're showing um, weight room down here and kind of a aerobics area up here. Um, we're hoping to create a lot of glazing on both this side and this side to kind of bring uh, your views back and forth. Uh, this side will be uh, looking over uh, the existing gym now. Um, also down here, we're moving uh, the current weight room. So this is coming up here. We've got uh, the wrestling practice room. We'll be taking that over. And then we'll be kind of renovating the entire locker room for stop and, and see if there's any questions on this before we move on. between the hallway and these spaces. So we've got large areas of glazing. Um, there's a hallway coming down here, which right at the end of it is a, a big uh, glass wall. So you'll see into these shop areas so you can see what's going on and hopefully um, will uh, entice students to take these as electives. Same with uh, this room here, we've got a uh, nice large piece of glazing looking into that room. Um, this one is the most renovated. Um, we're kind of taking out a wall and expanding it. This will be a fab lab. So there'll be CNC machines um, and various other uh, 3D printers and laser cutters in this area um, for use of both the metals folks as well as a lot of science uh, uses there. And on, as well as uh, we're creating this collaboration space. So it's a classroom outside of a classroom connected to the hallway uh, for smaller groups to break out into. We've added a stair here to get us up into this kind of unused space currently, um, up in the mezzanine above these spaces. So we've, we're creating two additional classrooms as well as uh, an additional collaboration space here. Opening up this current block wall here to create a little bit of visual connection down the spaces below. And uh, this is currently uh, wood storage, so we're creating a little link there so everyone can have access to this uh, kind of underutilized storage area. And again, these pictures aren't really uh, too visible right now, but they are printed out on the boards. So the media center, so we have great plans for the media center. Um, right now it's very closed off. Sometimes you don't even know that there's a library or media center. 
yes, I know there. So we're going to open it up with windows um, on both sides, on this side and on this side, and then cut out a little area. So this is facing the hallway um, over here. So that creates a nice collaboration area, um, very visible to the teachers and the library staff. Um, Throughout all the buildings will get reworked. Um, in the high school and the commons here, um, what we're looking at doing is eliminating, you know, gutting the bathrooms for a total update, and then creating kind of this bank of, uh, of private restrooms or bathrooms along the back wall with a shared sink area. In this photo, you can kind of see, this is a view looking into, and I know it's hard to see, so I invite you to take a look at the boards up front. Um, essentially, the, the rest bathrooms are a private bathroom. Um, full door, four, full wall, uh, complete enclosure, and then the sink area is common, but the sink area is also open potentially to the, uh, to the, to the common space. And what, what this does is it opens up or reduces the amount of area that's going to be behind doors that is difficult to monitor um, from the standpoint of, uh, you know, during the day bowling activities that could go on, that type of thing. Um, what it does too is it also creates an opportunity for more access. Um, you know, there, there's not men, women defined. It's, they're pretty much all available for anybody. So it's really kind of opens up a, a little bit more um, other numbers, you know, have to, you know, less waiting in line, that type of thing. Some of the other areas back here, too, are uh, uh, providing a family restroom off the commons, um, some storage, 
tables and chairs for re reconfiguring, uh, you know, setting up for different meetings, that type of thing. And then uh, a, a, a double-sized classroom, flex classroom that will be uh, available for any programming opportunity you know, during the day. And then on this side is kind of our career guidance uh, counseling center. So trying to connect that through that upper or that uh, front door of the common space as well. So that's a large uh, part of the of the uh, high school remodel. And you can kind of see some of these photos in the bottom of fitness centers, walking tracks, that type of thing to kind of give you an idea what the what the potential uh, will ultimately look like. Any questions on uh, high school? Yeah. Can you tell me what a science remodel is? I didn't see any of it. Science remodel. So we're still working through some of the budget numbers. Science, I know we've had, back in this area, we've had much, a lot of conversation. A lot of the deferred maintenance isn't shown on here from a finished standpoint. That's where we're still defining what that is. We haven't illustrated it on here yet. We don't know if we're going to be configuring walls quite yet. Uh, we're working through schematic design budgets at this time. situations where you have private bathrooms next to each other. That's what these are. These aren't toilet stalls. They're actually rooms, full height walls, uh, sound, you know, uh, sound insulation to deaden everything, full doors. Some areas where it's been done, let me get back to the picture. 
In some areas, it's been done. It's it's common space, really, for anybody. I, I would encourage that to be encouraged. Thank you. Okay. Well, thank you for the input. This is this is why we're having this uh, this session. Mm -hmm. Appreciate it. some support space, uh, restrooms, quiet office, quiet storage. Um, the other piece is converting since the commons or the cafeteria is not needed as a gymnasium, is creating an opportunity for that uh, cafeteria to be more of a flexible use common space, um, some dedicated seating for, for dining. And then in the back, since we have a uh, fair amount of square footage, some opportunity for some informal uh, learning spaces. Teachers could take a class into that space or two or three classes and uh, present, you know, have a presentation on a large screen, do a group learning session. Um, there's a fair amount of rework and improvement to the nurse area and then kind of some adjustments to some of these administrative office spaces back behind here to support the overall functions of the school. And then the media center uh, finished, primarily finished and furniture upgrades to create kind of more of that uh, atmosphere, more conducive to elementary age kids. And some new windows. And new windows, yep. And then restroom remodels, pretty much are all upgraded. Any questions on primary? stuff that's not shown on here um, but consistent through the projects is flooring upgrades, all the new ceilings, new LED lighting, um, locker, uh, new lockers in this uh, facility, this primary school, it's the shelf and hook scenario. We don't know yet if it's going to be full lockers. We haven't got that input from the users yet. Um, and then I'm trying to think of some of the other key pieces. Um, Things like plumbing of improvements, you know, there's water piping in the primary school that needs to be replaced. It's not shown on this drawing. Uh, the other the other thing is oh, I'm pressing the wrong button. So where the gym is gonna go, this is all a parking space right now. Um, the desire was to see if we could maybe get a little bit of green space out here that uh, could be used to bring students out and have a little outdoor uh, classroom session. Anticipating a few rows of bleachers on the sides for that to support that as well. Any other questions? Am I missing anything on the memory? So we'll jump to the intermediate. Um, intermediate school uh, district offices currently are right here. They would be part of the addition to the high school, which which creates um, a lot of the opportunity to, to improve the, the special ed support spaces that are lacking in the intermediate school. So um, what this becomes is the office space uh, occupied by the district admin would become the building administrative offices, nurse here, and then the old, where, they, where the building intermediate uh, offices are currently would get reassigned spaces for special ed um, intervention, that type of thing, uh, to create that kind of front uh, front access, 
So parents need to come in, they're, they're right there, they can meet with parents, they can meet with students, they need to pull out students, they can bring them back to the conducive spaces into this area. Um, the other uh, special ed space here that will be uh, improved is right in this area, um, creating a, a accessible toilet, kind of a little kitchen uh, space here, and then also access to the exterior for, the, for those folks to be able to get outside. Um, the media center upgrade, finish, furniture, um, that type of thing. And then is this the one that has the corner that's in the planner? Yep. Where we're at? Okay. So, and then kind of uh, looking at some of these spaces here on the side to uh, support that space. The cafeteria, again, finishes. We're tweaking a little bit with, by adding some new uh, doors so that there's a dual access for serving uh, lines to the serving counter. And then again, bathroom uh, uh, upgrades. And again, finish upgrades for all the corridors, uh, all new ceilings, and all new lockers in the intermediate school. floor area uh, that was uh, originally for an auditorium function. Um, by getting rid of that, that opens up the, the floor area to be more efficiently used for tables, chairs. Um, and also the other big piece that came up in the user group meetings was one of the conflicts in the morning is the students are dropped off from buses out here. They come in this door and they come down this hall at the time that they're trying to serve breakfast coming in this way. So the idea is in the morning, students would come in and they would be uh, kind of directed over into the common space where they, where they well, they'd be welcome to hang out before classes would start. And that would eliminate the conflict of, uh, of kids coming into the serving line for breakfast. Um, the other major piece is in the band and choir. So expanding uh, the band space right about here is the existing wall. Um, in the back, there is the, uh, the old space for that was related to the wood pellet burners uh, firing system. So that expansion happens, creates a uh, adequate size or a right size band room, um, some expands uh, equipment, some storage spaces, office, and then expanding the choir's footprint um, we ended up uh, losing two practice rooms and a piano room, so we're kind of moving everything down this way and then separating or providing separate space for band and choir. Um, this gives the choir the, the footprint needed to accommodate the numbers in that, uh, in that space. A lot of, uh, the other piece is adding kind of the, and I should have pointed out all of them, but every building um, gets a rework at the front entrance for a slight, from a slight to a more involved modification to create that secure entrance. So, so you're coming into the office to check in, um, serve, uh, service windows at those uh, corridor locations as well. We have one office that we're creating here and then slight rework of the, uh, of the furniture uh, in that administrative area. And a lot of the rest of this is, is kind of just reassigning some room spaces I think that's part of the perimeter security is door, uh, door contacts on all the doors. Um, in within also in the deferred maintenance is we're essentially plate replacing all the exterior doors on the buildings. A lot of them were hollow metal and we've seen some that are rusting away so those get upgraded. Uh, part of that would be adding the door contacts on, onto that with notifications so that if something is left open it notifies somewhere. 
Um, from a security standpoint, too, we'll be looking at is opportunities to compartmentalize the buildings so that in a lockdown scenario, you can lock down the majority of the building to minimize access for anybody that uh, might be trying to get in. One, one thing to add, too, quick on that from a, a, another communication or safety standpoint is replacement of the, the current PA bell system and how that ties in and integrates with fire alarm, too. So it's, it's essentially an all-in-one system uh, where today within uh, multiple buildings, that system, um, to put it bluntly, I guess, has failed. It doesn't work in all areas. It's not consistent, inconsistent at best. Uh, replacing that system and I think it's three of the buildings off the top of my head, uh, to uh, fully integrate communication throughout the entire building. I don't know if you have anything to add. No, the only thing, it, it, and what you're not seeing up here too that you're gonna see when you come back at design development, and if you wanna spend some time with us too out in the commons area, is this as John mentioned, the deferred maintenance piece of this, which if you remember back, um, for those that were on the task force and come to the other community meetings that we held, when we walk through each of the facilities, each school has its own specific deferred maintenance list. So some of these schools are missing cameras in certain areas, we're bolstering that back up and filling those gaps. So we're adding in technology pieces and safety items that are specific to each facility too, based upon their needs. So there's some, like Mike mentioned, the PA and bell systems, the door upgrades for exterior doors where we have rusting doors and going to aluminum, um, such as where we're going to the pass-through window to create a consistent so that those who are visiting for, that, uh, for parents that have students at the primary school may have students at the middle school or high school, you're gonna have a very similar form and fashion how you enter each of these facilities that's similar across the district. It's not gonna be different at the primary school and then you go to the middle school and it's completely different. We're trying to set these up now so that they're consistent across all the buildings at the schools uh, for that aspect of it. How old is the face slash uh, was the face sent to you? In middle school? Yeah. Face that the yellow that yep. yellow box there, yep. yep. And that was some of the conversations been around um, similar to that photo I showed when we went to tour in Hudson, the culinary lab. So the conversation is aligning kind of how the middle school gets finished off so that it aligns with the high school. So it kind of connects those those programs. So the opportunity and um, or the, the goal is to make these flexible spaces and the way that we're, we're looking at doing that is the, if there's a culinary component is putting that out to the perimeter um, on the interior of the classroom is, is flexible tables that can be moved around and be uh, used for different different coursework, not necessarily culinary, that type of thing. So what was the entrance to all the buildings to look at? Because I know some of the buildings are now being walked in and there's entryway and then there's the office. What role does that play? So, so similar to, um, I'm trying to think if you have an example right now. So when you walk in, now you have you have your, your aluminum doors that were added further in and those are the locked location for a lot of them. Like in the high school, you can't get to the office from there, so you have to buzz in with the, with the A-phone system. So the changes will be is at that interior vestibule door is where that locked security point is. When you come in the exterior, you get in, that's only as far as you can get. There'll be a door or a end or a window into the office, and that's where you'll get buzzed in to get checked in get your credentials, and then you'll be allowed to get into the building at that point. So it's putting um, putting the offices, you know, that's a big part of the high school here, is putting that office for security right at the front entrance to be able to set that up.
within within the office space, it, it, there's basically a lockdown button, right? So off of the office, any of those doors that go to the school, the office is going to function similar to how it functions today. You've got staff coming in and out. You have students coming in and out. In the event of a lockdown situation, there's there's a lockdown button. Basically, it's a yellow plunging button is what most of them are. They hit that and that's gonna lock doors. So any door that goes to the school out of that office is locked down, there's no path into the school. The only path is the path out through the vestibule and out of the building. So, you know, and not to go in, but similar to how we have the high school today, right? So you get buzzed in at this set of aluminum doors and it's an honor system, please come into the office and check in. What, what needs to happen from a, a true security standpoint, whether it's accomplished through a physical door that you walk through, walk into the office on one end and walk out, um, where space allows, that's the ideal method to do that. Otherwise, you hold them in that vestibule at a pass-through window at a minimum before they get access into the rest of the building. So it's not like this. the office is forever locked down. The office will function similar to how the offices function today with the exception that uh, there, would, there will be technology that in the event of a lockdown, you can hit a button, the door's locked, nobody can get into the building, the only path in at that point is out. So I, and this is like, again a little bit in the weeds, but like fire department, police, uh, there's usually a little box, they call it a Knox box, it's outside of the building, that's got a hard physical key to gain access into the building. And those are set up, we have meetings with whether it's fire and or police um, and the districts involved as well. Placement of those boxes, preferred placement of those, we integrate that in. Um, the camera. So to go into the weeds on how that works, um, there will be Knox boxes added to every building here. Uh, and when we do that, it's a set up with usually district facilities, uh, fire and police. Everybody sees the keys go into the box. Usually the fire department and or the police, depending upon uh, the city, will actually be the ones to lock that box. And nobody else has access other than them. Questions anymore? Yeah. The other component of it too is positioning the, the person at that, that reception to have a, have as much eyes on the front or have as many eyes on the front of the building from the inside as well so that they can see people approaching the building as soon as possible. So the, the high school uh, will get a big improvement from that perspective, obviously from being totally embedded, but that whole front of that infill is going to be administrative offices and reception. So it's going to be a number. break and then we can be welcome again to kind of come and look at the the boards out in the common space and you can see a little more detail and have yeah, a little